Thank you guys for tuning in to the Zoe Vision Experience Podcast. Your boy Frank Nitty. I'm back for another episode. And this episode is gonna be super dope, man. I got one of the dopest designers, one of the killer, one of the killer Bay Area, you know, singer, fashion designer. Um, she even come and hit the runway, anything, everything. So man, it's gonna be super, it's gonna be super dope, man. I got my girl, you know, sneakerhead. We've been rocking together hey, for a while. Go. Really been really been enjoying her come up and her journey, man. But we're gonna definitely dive into it and we're gonna talk about a lot of different things that's been going on here in the Bay Area, man. So, you know, tell us about it, man. Welcome in. Tell us about yourself a little bit. It's crazy because I don't sing, but I get it. I do got a little song out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I don't sing, but most people, when they hear my voice, yeah. they assume they assume that I do, but absolutely not, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, absolutely. Down, so, da- man, I know download I've been black to, I've been rocking to, I've been rocking to it myself here. Just kind of like listening to it and just kind of vibing out to it. And I like what I, I like what I hear, man. And we definitely gonna plug that in so everybody can hear. So where the inspiration come from with that that song? A black designer. I just felt like uh, being a creator. There's all forms of art, right? So it's like, of course, I know a lot of dope poetry people who do poetry I know a lot of dope designers and so on so I feel like I needed to kind of you know reach out to the artists side of things people who listen to music you know not just wear clothes and are in the fashion but also lyrically as well and you know supporting my DJ Sunflower I was like I'm not gonna sit on the beat I, I feel like I can write something to the beat so that's, <laughs> that's where it created I was like alright you know it took me a minute, but it was all me, you know? So it was just something that I created on a another scale of just designing stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. it's all about, and, and it's it's all about, about being it's a full about artist. Me. Yeah, it's yeah, about being it's, a full it's, artist, man. You know, it's uh, it's not it's just not one medium, you know, man. Art can be on anything, and that's why I kind of tell people not let, as an artist, don't try to get boxed in. You know, if you just, if you're a fashion person, man, get into some mixed media, do something else. Don't necessarily just always just kind of be on one thing. So what kind of inspires you to create these different things? Because I've seen you come from your clothing. Now you're doing shoes, you're doing music. Like what inspires you to kind of keep going and keep elevating to different things? Uh, I mean, just like why I don't really like working a nine to five, right? It's just I don't like doing things the same thing over and over again. I like to create new things, you know, see what I possibly possibly can do or challenge myself to to what I can't do, but get better at it if I just continue to try, you know. Like I never thought about painting a sneaker, but when people see or hear a sneakerhead, oh, you design sneakers? No, nah, but. You know, I'm like, why not? You know what I'm saying? So I tried and I picked up a sneaker and some paint and and went at it. You know, so and and that's what you get. You know, I, I know, right? <laughs> so do you, you get. Do, you, do you have any ideas on what you're going to do, or you just kind of free flow it when you kind of like creating those, you know, those paint on those shoes? Do you have an idea first, or you just kind of like just go into it like, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but when you start designing, you just kind of go with the process. Like, how do you, how's your process go when you start creating those different designs for those shoes? Some colors that kind of pop out to me, and then I kind of, you know, make it make sense to me. You know, creating stuff like, okay, I'll do this, and then once I start painting, everything kind of comes together in my head, and I just go for it, and then at the end of the result and I'm like okay it, it came out dope you know yeah, but no, right? I never really like sketch stuff out and you know make this plan okay step one I'm gonna do this step two I kind of just go with the flow of how I just feel and you know hey, I, <laughs> and I totally create understand. and create off of that so yeah man yeah. I, I totally get it because like I said sometimes I I go with the colors the feel you know I, I can't create um, unless I'm inspired. I know some people can just create, 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 and that's not how I do it. I'm more or less like a person I had to be inspired by something to kind of go and create, which is a little bit different. So sometimes I have to be a little bit slower when I'm creating creating things. But I know sometimes like the social media kind of speeds us up because you want to try to put keep things out there. But 
it's not always a great thing. You know, everybody got to work at their own pace. And I like how you, you know, you work at your own pace. Like, I see, one time I see you working on some clothes, and then I see you working on some shoes, or I might just see you just, like, creating a photo shoot or something. Like, that's what I like from you because you're always doing something different. You're staying creative. You're staying in a good zone where sometimes I get kind of get locked out of the zone. I, I, like, be creative, and then I kind of lose the juice for a little while. And I'd be yeah. trying to find it again, but then I kind of yeah. come across your page and just get kind of get inspired by some of the things that you do. So I appreciate you keeping that content coming on those different things mm -hmm. that you're doing. So um, when you were, you. yeah, yeah, it's definitely so. You know, you gotta you gotta get I gotta grab inspiration from everywhere, man, and anybody and everything, man. So it's, it's just out there, and that's what the world's for. And I I like how you you know elevated. So you let's take a step back, and you you know you were doing your things with the, with the fashion first. So like, mm -hmm. what got you started into that fashion? part of your your artistic creativity bucket <laughs> well what got me into sneakerhead right is working a nine to five so being at a nine to five i was like okay this is definitely not it you know this is not my end of the road you know good pay 401k it, it was the life right like being young getting getting into a um you know into a big company why not you know you with the big dogs you the young one you know you making the same money that these older people are making to provide for their family but i just felt like i had to step out and create my own brand within myself you know like why not i was still at a young age that i can kind of take that leap a, a nine to five is always going to be there but the passion and the strive and creativity is never you know always Absolutely. in there you know and fall, what, fall um, back on so for sure like um what when was you like at what point did you realize like hey i can i can be a seamstress because it wasn't just like a, a normal person like me i probably just try to go get a t-shirt press or get screen print or something like that you were actually you know hand stitching your things and that's what i liked about you with hand stitching your jackets you had stitching yeah. just a lot of different materials you were working with and i like that about you so and who taught you how who taught you how to you know sew because that's something that you just don't pick up you know as an adult <laughs> right absolutely um so i mean i started doing screen print you know i started just coming up with a a logo and hiring somebody to do screen print on t-shirts but it's like me investing and not getting what i want you know it was like okay <laughs> like i need to just figure out and do it myself you know because you're investing in another business that just don't see your vision you know, they're not seeing what you see, Absolutely. you know, so it's like, you know, that you get a hundred t-shirts or something that you just are not happy about, you know, but you got to figure it out. So yep. I figured it out and I invested in how to make a screen, uh, a transfer. And then I um, invested in a, a heat press and started doing my own one-on-ones, you know, and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. So, and then I got into sewing. So I was like, okay, cool. I got my logo out there. People, when they see it, they gonna see it, you know? So I started off just um, blasting my logo on t-shirts, you know, like big, I don't care. It just was like, there it is, sneakerheads. You know, get, I want y'all to get familiar with who sneakerhead is and when you see it, you see it. You know, just like um, polo, you know, it's the quality of it. But when you see that little, you know, horse and that guy on the horse, you gonna know it's polo. You know, know, and you know, and you know that it's good quality because it's polo. It don't got to be big and blasted, but when you see it, you know what it is and the quality of it. So that was my, that was my journey. That was where I wanted to go. You know, like okay, blast it. I want everybody to see what sneakerhead is. Now I'm gonna hide it, but when they see it, they still gonna know what sneakerhead is yep. because how different it is. You know, nobody's seen it before. It's a one on one. It's sneakerhead. You know, so. Um, I mean, that's just where I fall in now. So now I don't even care about having my logo on my clothes because when people see it, yeah, they know yeah. what it is. Because it's, 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 it's branded. It's branded. So it's kind of like it's just steps. It's just a journey. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't even worry about having my logo black and on clothes, which is not a bad thing because people buy logos. Yep. You know, that's that's yep. what it is. If, if they don't see that logo, it's not good. <laughs> like, nah, I don't want that. But if it's blasted, oh yeah, give me that t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. could be a gilded t-shirt for $10. Yeah. 
But yep. if it got that brand on it, oh yeah, yep. I'm gonna spend a hundred and twenty, two hundred dollars for that know. t-shirt. You know, but the quality is not as good. You know, yep. so yep. And that's the thing. You know, we have to. It's it's quality over your passion or what 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 not. And so you're trying to de- trying to decide, like you said, you you created the. The, the brand first with the name sneakerhead they get to see it you branded it out there everybody knows what it looked like you're doing the fashion shows and so then you can actually tell it back and start creating things and they kind of say you put the look put the logo on the inside of the label inside right. label so now when they look at it like okay i know it's a, i know it's a sneakerhead piece but it's not necessarily all over the all over the jacket anymore and i saw right. some of the like the rug rat jackets you've had you've made just like the different mm-hmm. velvet the different materials like where do you get though what do you pull that inspiration from with just like a childhood or just different fabrics and materials you're working with yeah exactly childhood things that make me happy things that put me in a good place you know so it's like rug rats i li- i watched the rug rats my whole my life, I still watch Rugrats. You know, it played a big part. And like, you know, like Rugrats game, Rugrat album. You know, like I was Rugrats. Yeah, yeah you're Rugrats. So, yeah, you know? I know it. I, I can see, I can see, the, I can see the inspiration. You know what I mean? I can see it, it was constant. It was pulling out. You were pulling from your childhood, and you was putting in your creativity, and it was showing on your on your clothing and your pieces. And I like doing those fashion shows. I tell everybody like, when I'm shooting a fashion show, I don't really actually enjoy it in the moment. And then when I'm at, cause I shoot, I'm looking through a little tiny hole and I'm just shooting all these photos because it's going so fast because like I tell everybody, right. I don't even see the fashion. I don't see any of the setup beforehand. I just kind of like show up and then the music mm-hmm. turn, turn on and lights go down and it's like showtime. <laughs> and I kind of like have to like figure out like what's going on. Like what right. this person coming from over here, this person dancing, this person jumping, you know? And so I, I got to like try to catch all this stuff that's going on. Cause I don't want to take a bad photo of somebody and you know, I post it. I want them to be happy because a lot of times the models that you have is their first time modeling. They never modeled before, and so right. when they when I take a picture of, I want them to be proud of it and be happy to repost it because I want them to you know be happy about themselves and want to do it again. You know, so right. and, and also I want to yeah. ca- capture your garments in a good good light so to make sure that people when they see it like, oh man, I like that. That's dope. I want to go go to her page. Let me go cop a piece from her. So you know, what I'm saying I don't actually enjoy it until like the next day or the day after when I'm actually doing the photos. I'm looking back at them like, man. That's some clean pieces let me let me get the light right let me get the color right on it so when she sees it, she's right. like okay i really i really enjoy this piece so man i just try to take pride in doing that for you you know and other designers because i know you guys put so much effort and hard work into designing those things and putting those sets together so tell me about it like how is it how does that the idea come from your set design because it's not only just designing the clothes and finding the right. models it's all about your set design like where do you get those ideas from uh, so my set design, meaning like my music. Yeah, the music, um, the, the 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 music, the dancing, the choreography. You know, because you guys have a lot going on when you do. Because sometimes you have a lot of models, <laughs> and you know they're modeling different things. So, so yeah. you have a lot going on. Like, what where do you get those ideas from? I mean, I feel like, uh, I mean, I know Sneakerhead is a brand that probably you can just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I reach out to people that just do what they love to do. Do what that you love to do and sneak ahead. That's all. That's all you gotta do. There, there's no rules to it. Go out there, be you, be stay true, stay you. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want them to. It's not a job. You know, it, it's a it's a passion. So it's like once you start giving people direction, it takes away from that. You know, it takes away from your passion. It takes away from the fun of doing things. You know, so it's kind of like no. Sneakerhead, the brand, let me do that. Let me let me make sure you look fly doing what you love to do. And I got you, you know. So there's no there's no rules to it. Like I feel like I pick models who are normal people, you know. I don't want no out of the magazine model. That's not my goal. You know, I want people to normal people like myself and you able to walk in a Target or walk in a Walmart and simply be fly and comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the thing. <laughs> you wanna have it you wanna be comfortable. You don't wanna have something so tight or so you can't move around. Right. You wanna be able to 
I want to be able to have something I can kind of throw on. You know, I can go go out or I can go catch a flight or something, something comfortable, Absolutely. man. Like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. That's what I think that your brand kind of represents. Like you can be able to, it's, multi, it's multifunctional. Like you can always go, you know, hit the club with it. You can go hit the bar or if you got to go do something mm -hmm. late night, you can throw the jacket on, put the hoodie right. on behind it. Okay, you know what I mean? and still kinda, be fly. Can, yeah, you know? be fly. You can dress it up and you can dress it down, you know. And I've been, right. you know, you know, I've been photographing your, your clothing for a long time now. And I just saw the journey that it went, like I said, from the t-shirts to the clothes to the jackets to you know just all different things that you're doing and also you know we're going to sneak this in and talk about your brand partnership that's something that you created you know from you know with Jägermeister how, how did that come about mm -hmm. oh yeah so we're going to rewind it back to who helped me so who helped me so who started who started me behind the sewing machine is my cousin Cam which you just shot she did a dope um a dope set uh, at the last tap art. Yeah, show her. You just posted her too. She oh, just posted okay. the pictures. Yeah. But um, Cam, she's my cousin and she went to fit them. So uh, she went to a designer school. She designed bow ties, dresses, and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I would just give her ideas like, okay, we just going to keep it in the family, right? Like, well, you can do this. And she's like, girl, you can do this. All you got to do, you know, so. I had picked up a sewing machine and I thought it was going to be easy. I thought the sewing machine was going to do all the work, right? All I had to do was just do do, but nah, it was more to it. And I put the sewing machine away for about a year and came back to to it because I was like, all right, I think I'm ready. I'm focused. Now I know what I'm getting into. So after that, I just kind of, you know, just went with the flow. Just let, let the sewing machine kind of do its thing and me be creative and operating the sewing machine, you know, <laughs> figuring it out, yeah. fixing it, you know, making sure that I can uh, thread it up and change the needle. And you know what I'm saying? It's just the small to thing. The little <laughs> it's thing. the small thing. <laughs> yeah. So how long does it take you to turn, how long, what's the turnaround time for like a, a to do a piece or like a jacket or something? Like how long does it take you to do it? I mean, now I, I kind of mastered the bomber jacket. Like, as you know, my stuff is reversible, so you can wear it two sides. And I also showcase that on the runway too. Like you can wear it inside out and still yeah. fly. You know, yeah, man. I see. So it, like, man. like you said, day and night. You know, you yeah, I see for the it. Day, I see it all you the time. Like I said, you night. can dress it up and you can dress it down. And you know, your models yeah. always—they always got so much energy. They're live. They're exciting. You know, I can see that the the energy that that they, that you rub off on them because they come down they come down the runway they ready you know what I mean they doing all of the dance and they moving they you know they doing everything and you had you somehow you picked the right models for your sits like when I see the model in your in your sit I'm like yeah that's the right person to be in her sit because I see all the sits and I'd be like yeah that person belongs in her sit because they have so much energy and you can see how free they are in your clothing and that's that's something that you want you want to be comfortable and that's the main thing that you want to do when you're doing the clothes and stuff like that so you're saying so what did this where did the sneakerhead name come from like I know people normally try to say they, they all about the shoes and they they flip it and like oh, I'm a sneakerhead but they don't necessarily say okay I am the sneakerhead so for you right. where did the name come from <laughs> Well, the name, I love sneakers, right? And my family, they from Boston. So they don't say shoes, they say sneakers. And the spelling for it is S-N-I-Q, which my nickname is Neek. So all my family call me Neek. That's where the N-I-Q came in. And I just put the, you know, I plugged it in. I plugged myself in the sneaker head, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but there I got my is. first. Boom. Right, right. I got my first legit job that I really, you know, went in saying I'm going to be myself wearing sneakers. So I was like, all right, and, you know, going in comfortable, you know, not in no heels, no dress shoes, a dress, like, this is who I am, okay? So, <laughs> you know, accept me for this. And I got my job wearing my first pair of sneakers. So my mom used to be like, do not wear tennis shoes to no interview. <laughs> do not do that. You gotta be you. Me, you gotta be you, right? You gotta be you. So. You gotta be. You gotta do what's make you comfortable and stuff like that. So, since I know you're the sneaker here, you're the sneaker queen. So, give me your top three J's that you gotta <laughs> you gotta have. It's crazy. I am a sneakerhead, but I mean, I just love sneakers. So when people they be like, okay, so what's the hottest sneaker you? Know? I'm like, boy, girl. I mean, you know, I just love sneakers. And not a, I'm not educated high on sneakers, like sneaker heads are you know what i'm saying that's why the yeah. spelling 
is is wh- what it is. Because yeah, because I, I know the first thing know? they hear, the first thing they hear is like, oh, she a sneakerhead. I gotta know what she in. What Jay? She got the three. <laughs> she got the fives. The bridge. You know what I mean? Yeah. She got the patent letters. Like, what she on? She on the foes or the ones? You know what I mean? They so many. It's so many Jordan names out there. I'm like, right. how do you guys keep up with them? So many colorways. I'm like. Right. They just keep dropping one after the other. And I was like, how do you guys keep up with this stuff? I'm like, I work, I got kids, I'm a, I got my family, man. I like, I can't keep up with this stuff, man. It's just like, it's crazy. Right. Yeah. No, uh, my my favorite Jordan is Jordan ones for sure. I like the bread ones. Yeah. Um, I just love Jordan ones. They are versatile. You can dress it up. You can dress it down. They look good with jeans. Not all Jordans look good with jeans or slacks. Yeah. And yep. when you have a Jordan one on, you can dress it up or dress it down. Um, I love the Elevens for sure. The Gamma Elevens, the Bread Elevens is probably one of my favorite sneakers. But ones all day, so just I throw a pair of ones on all day long. And some to get some Crocs too. Crocs too. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you can't wear them J's all the time every single day. You know what I mean? You gotta switch it up a little bit. You gotta switch it up. Oh, Crocs in there too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So man, but, um, wanna, I I know man. So those those different shoes, but I want to kind of like circle back to this music thing. Like this is new to me. This music thing that you're doing. So are you gonna be trying to you know go back in the studio and doing some more music, or you just gotta wait for you to get inspired by something? Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure that I have to be inspired by something. I'm not just gonna be in the studio like that. You know, like that song. It was a song that I just created off of how I feel at the moment, you know? So it wasn't something that, okay, cool, cool I'm just going to keep doing this music. I got an EP coming out, you know? I just felt like... Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, like, I'm, I'm a full-fledged artist now, you know what I mean? That's how you say it. I'm, right. doing, I'm, doing this, I'm doing this rap thing. I'm on this, I'm this R&B thing. This is my thing now, you know what I mean? So get ready. I'm dropping my EP soon. Nah, and, and a lot of it inspired me, like, just behind brands. Every brand has a song, I feel like. You know, it's like a little theme song. Yeah. You know, it's like a little anthem. So my thing was like, oh, maybe I can make a little commercial out of it. And that yeah. was my thing. Okay. So, like, okay. My, my next step is, you know, probably making a dope commercial out of that song. So it's going to be an anthem. It's not just going to be a song, you know. Yeah, so, I feel you. So yeah. would you say that's your theme song to your life? Does it, You think that's your soundtrack or your theme song right now to your life? Or, you know what I mean, you just kind of, like, holding it? dear and close into your heart that you don't want nobody else to really kind of you know latch on to it just yet until you kind of really kind of can put it out there and kind of put the commercial out there so people can really kind of have something to resonate to put a visual on uh, uh, i just feel like it's just something that somebody can relate to me as i feel like i don't really put that much um out there on my instagram or on social media for people to you know to relate so um or yeah. to really know who i am so i was like maybe i can put in a song so maybe more people can, can can relate to who i am you know like you know the central valley raised me you know i was born in the bay but since you know the valley raised me you yeah. know so it's like as soon as i got 18 i was back to the bay you yeah. know created you know like it's just uh, just a song just describing who i am as an artist and just making sure that being you know, outside your comfort zone is dope. Being not like the next person next to you is dope. You know, like you don't want to be like that next person. You want to be your own person, you know? So to each their own for sure. So Man, I just great. feel like <laughs> for those who do hear the song, you know, don't get to relate a little bit more who Sneakerhead, who Dominica Bonner is, not just Sneakerhead. Because Sneakerhead's my brand, you know, it's not who I am though. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so, what are some of those uh, tips, tips, and tricks to kind of keep you motivated as an entrepreneur and keep you focused and productive? Like, what are some of the things you do? Uh, I, I work out. I definitely do. I'm very. Um, I, I like to work out. It helps me get a clear mind. You know, being outside helps me get a clear mind. Um, I've been reading a lot more audio books instead of just listening to music, but. Just, um, you know, like we all deal with life and being yeah. an entrepreneur is not easy because at the end of the day, we still got to deal with life and still figure out how we're going to make this dollar out of 
your brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. okay, you gotta keep, you gotta keep going. You gotta just keep going. And you know, life is full of obstacles. It's a full of ups and downs. You know, losses. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like a lot of my stuff is just. It's created off of pain. It's created off of love. It's created off of, you know, good times, bad times. But it's just like something that I go to that helps me get through a lot of stuff, you know. Definitely. So, so what are some of those books you're reading? What's something you say Some you're reading books? What kind of books you're reading or that you've read that uh, kind yeah. of inspire you? Um, I've been listening to Will Smith's audio book, his new book. I've oh, nice. To I haven't heard it. It's pretty yet. dope. Good. It's dope. Yeah, it's just... um. You know, going through his journey as a child and how he became who he is, you know? So it's just like, dang, okay, like, yeah, that's you see crazy, Fresh you Prince, know? You see Fresh Prince, you just think everything is... Uh, He's fresh, you know? You know? Yeah, <laughs> you just think everything is, you know, peaches yeah. and cream with him. But, you know, he's a he's a human being, too. You know, when he's turn, he had to turn off that, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and he got to turn on Will Smith, you know, it's a different lifestyle. Well, I mean, like, like I said, I mentioned, like, people go through life, so... His book is just really breaking down his life, you know, and how he just, <laughs> his obstacles that he went through, you know, still mm-hmm. to be as successful as he is, he didn't give up, you know. So it's definitely motivated. Um, I am also reading the book from a- April Walker. She's a dope designer from Brooklyn, New York, who okay. she's um, OG, but she's been consistent and, you know, she. It's just very low key with it, but she touch legends. Um, and it's called Get Your Ass Off the Couch. So yeah, that's a that's a good title. Yeah. Okay. Especially when that's you want to sit your ass title. on the couch. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Because I know I'll be I know one of my flaws is I, I procrastinate, you know what I mean, a lot, you know, and I procrastinate and I be trying to do better and be like I'm gonna do better, but I just kinda still procrastinate. And sometimes it's kinda weird because I sometimes do my best work at the last minute. Because I have a deadline, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to do this. And I just can't get the idea to do it, to come to me. And then all of a sudden, it'd be like almost the last minute, and the idea come to me, and I could feel like I get the best work done at that moment. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. for you, what are those, um, like say, for instance, where, do you, where, do you, where are you at most when you get your best ideas? Like for me, when I'm in the shower, I feel like I get all the ideas. I, I can't even write them down. I can't get to my phone and put them in. I got to like keep saying them in my head so I don't forget them. Because there be so many yeah. rushing to me at one time. So where are you? When you, you know it sounds weird, like it's crazy. Like I'll be in the shower and it's like the idea was like, wow, it just it just randomly come in my head and I'm like, I can't forget this. And then they just start all rushing to me. And then I'll be like, all right, I can't forget this. I gotta remember. And I gotta hurry up, get out the shower so I can like write it down or put it in my phone so I don't forget it. Cause that's why I got or I forget it. Or it's during another random time, or if I'm waking up from a uh um a, like a dream or something in the middle of the night i'd have to grab my phone and like put it right down and like type it in my phone because the idea comes to me it just the random I, it, gets, it comes to me at the most random time so for you what do you feel like those ideas come to you uh so the crazy thing is uh black designer the song <laughs> I honestly wrote it in the shower, so oh wow! <laughs> like I really wrote in the shower, like it's just something that you know you just rehearse. Like I know the lyrics back to back, so when I went into the studio, he's like, "You don't gotta read nothing." I'm like, "Nope, nope." <laughs> I yeah, just I got it. I, I, got I, I spit it. it every day. I shower. got it. I- it's, it go, I, don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about the shower. I don't know what it is. I guess because you just, you're in that moment, you're, you're detached from your mobile device and it's just you and you're just in there and you only, you're only only in there with your thoughts and things just kind of just happen. It's kind of weird how it, it, we're, we both had that same commonality for ideas come to you in the shower. It's like the right. most random place. Like you think mm-hmm. you'd be out on a walk somewhere and an idea come to you. You'd be like, no, I, I can't, nope. I can't when I was in the shower. <laughs> It's the and heat, the water, I don't know. It's something. It's <laughs> something about it. It's that stillness or something. I don't know what it is. Because like I said, I can work. I only can work when I'm inspired to do something. Like like I do Like I do the photography, yeah. That's one of the things that I do. But I also do you know, mixed media and other things. So I can, you know, tr- but those ideas only come to me every so often. I can't just cr- keep flushing them out like that, which is the, the good and the bad. You know what I mean? That's the good and the bad. Because I want to put out more work. But I just don't have the the inspiration sometimes to do it, and if I try to force it, it doesn't come out right. I, I've tried to do that before, and like I said, when you're in the shower, it just comes to you, which yeah, is the weirdest sure. thing. 
Yeah, I, like, I, did not, um, I did not expect. I did not expect that. I, I promise you, I did not. I just told my side, just kind of, because I'm weird. <laughs> I feel like I'm weird. I, did, just, I felt like that was just so weird. You're not you not know? though. I feel <laughs> like that was though. just so weird. You know, just the, just the randomness. Yeah, I thought it was just so. Man, for you, like, what would your 15 year old self, when you were 15, would you say the self image or yourself would would be now? Say, like, okay, when I was 15 year old, your self image or what you what you be doing right now? What you thought? What are you doing that thing? What you thought you were gonna be doing when you was fifteen, or is nowhere near it? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. I wanted to go to a all black college, right? And he stepped in because I was uh the step leader of my BSU. So that's where the dancing comes from. Like I was, I would make the <laughs> from the what we wore to the step. You know, make sure that we was all good. So I feel like. I would be probably a pediatrician. That's where my 15-year-old would think that I'm at right now because I love kids and I love just helping people and just seeing a smile on people's faces. So, Man, that's amazing. 15, 15-year-old, I would think that I would be a pediatrician until I realized how much school oh, you had yeah. to have, okay, education you had to have to, to become that. I thought I was like, okay, yeah, you know. You go, look at that course, <laughs> you go look at that course curriculum and you be like, you look at that course curriculum, you're like, uh, you got to take, I got to take physics two and physics three. I got to take chem right. two, chem three. You're like, ah, uh, you know what? I'm not, I, I, I'm going to have to find something else to do. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> high, high school all over, uh, you know, but, um, I did go to school for fire technology, which was dope. I enjoyed it. Um, cause a part of me wanted to be a firefighter, so. Nice. So dope. Yeah, those yeah. firefighter tests are not easy at all. I didn't realize because you don't think about a firefighter what they have to go to go through to be a firefighter, but those tests are not easy at all. The things they have to go through just to become a firefighter. But so shout out to yeah. you for wanting to do something <laughs> like that. That's very. It takes a lot of lot of labor intensive work to kind of get in, get in the door. But they do a lot of different things, especially with the firefighter. I didn't know how much they did until I actually oh, talked yeah. to one of them before. They they do so much. They do so much. Well, I just think they just go out. I just, I guess I, I'm just ignorant. I I just thought they just go out for fires you know what i mean no absolutely <laughs> they not yeah they go no, out for firefighters they, there for anything they, accidents, everything okay everything. Your, your cat is stuck on the roof the firefighter is going to show up before a police officer most definitely yep they get called for everything <laughs> i did not know that i just thought they got called out for fires it's calling me crazy so I, was like, I thought they got called out for fires that was it it was like no we get called for everything like you said they get they get called first before the police even get there so. yeah absolutely yeah and so, even yeah. like um what is it uh yeah i mean to be a firefighter you have to go through emt you know so going through emt is a whole nother you know it's a whole nother struggle right there and i just was like I wasn't for that. I was like, what? Yeah, uh, you're the first yeah. on scene. Yeah, you got no you, CPR. You're not getting paid you gotta be as much to... as nobody else. You yeah. get underdog pay, okay? You pull up to an accident and somebody's there, you know, maybe unconscious or something like that, and you got to revive them. You got to pull them out. The, first, you got to get them out the car, depending, depending on how... You know, damage the right. carriers, you got to get them out, make sure they're not hurt, you know, revive them. And losing the case, eye, a finger, the you don't know get what. There. Yeah, you don't know what. And you're the first one on scene, and the people who actually need to be actually doing the work, not there yet, so you have to do it. So, yeah, it's pretty right. intensive what they have to go through. So, shout out to, you know, all the firefighters out there, man. EMTs, for sure. EMTs, you know, you know what I mean? Because you guys are here yeah. the same, probably the same probably just as liable as a doctor would be if you fall on mm -hmm. come on scene and somebody you're trying to revive them or whatever the case may be save their life or something like that which is very rewarding right. i would imagine if you're able to do something right. like that you know so right. but as an entrepreneur we know this thing is that road is always windy it's never just a straight straight narrow road so what's one thing that you wish you knew before um you kind of jumped into that entrepreneur game <laughs> uh good question uh i i don't know i just feel like i didn't know how much time i think that it would take you know and time <laughs> it takes yeah. a lot of time and consistency for sure so it's like I, you know you think that one thing is gonna be a hit when it's just not you know you think that you know, that having that one artist in your in your stuff is gonna be okay. I'm I'm on top now. I got I got young and man myself. Okay, <laughs> you know, ooh, you know, like it's not like that. Like you got to keep going and you got to trust your past because you know if if that 
that artist is not rooting for Sneakerhead, like you rooting, it's just another day, you know? So it's like if they're not putting in that same love in it like you got, it's going to go as far as you if you put it out there. You know? So yeah, I just yeah. felt like I didn't know how much time it was going to take and how long of a process it was going to be. You know, I was like, okay, you know, yeah. I thought it would be a little simpler, but it's not. And, it's not you know, at all. Just and I hear that. Staying I hear dedicated. That. I hear that a lot from uh, entrepreneurs who are kind of out there on the grind doing their thing. You know, they make it look glamorous online. You know, you're going through your feed and everybody's an entrepreneur. They making this money. They doing all this, but they're not showing you the 10 years that would it took them to get there. And when you get there, all of a sudden you go from your nine to five to working, you know, 13, 18 hours a day. You know what I mean? You, when you were working your nine to five, you can kind of turn it off and you can be done with it. But then you jump into the entrepreneurial game and you're working twice as hard as double a day. You're just working like a dog trying to get it up off the ground because nobody knows right. you when you get started. And so you have to start from, from the ground zero and kind of have to right. build it up so it takes time. So like you said, you spend a lot of time and consistency. And that's the thing a lot of, I think a lot of us have a hard time with, with consistency, just kind of keeping yeah. the keeping the grind going. And once you get the momentum, you kind of want to relax a little bit. And then yeah. you kind of sit back a little bit. And it's like, no, this is when you need to be going even harder because once you get the ball rolling, you got to keep it going. So I, yeah. I totally get it. So would you, and, would, you I mean, money it? would you change too. it? Would you change it? Would you change it? Would you oh, change no, it? I wouldn't change it. I mean, I wouldn't change it, but I definitely would go in being more educated. Like, you know, if I need to take a business class, marketing class, that's something that's really big, especially being an entrepreneur, especially into fashion. You got to really know how to market yourself, especially um, financially. Like, my nine to five helped me build my brand. You know, it helped me financially. So, Saying, you know, fucking nine to five uh, is all about you. It's kind of like, no, your nine to five supports your dream. You it's know, your first investor. It, it, it's, it's your first investor, you know. So it's kind of like you have to, you have to have a nine to five. I feel like to have a business and starting from the ground up, if you're not wealthy and not in a wealthy family, you got to work <laughs> to get your stuff. You got you to bootstrap you gotta, it. You got to take a couple of dollars, right. pay, pay your bills, take a couple of dollars, put it to the side and stack it up and then go buy some materials right. and then try to flip it mm-hmm. and keep it going. It just, it, right. it takes a little bit of capital to kind of like get it off the ground. It's going to take a little bit of capital just to get it going. And then once you kind of right. get the ball going, then you can kind of start you know, like marketing. And that's, I think, like, right. what are some of your marketing tactics? Like, you know, as a brand, I know you're doing the fashion shows, but you start doing the kickbacks and other things. So what, what kind of marketing, what, what were your marketing ideas to kind of help your brand grow? Uh, I mean, of course, I just enjoy doing what I love to do. That was my marketing thing. Do what you love, you know, love what you do. And I enjoy being around music, you know. Uh, I love being around people who's dope. That's who inspires me, you know. So being, having my Let's Kick It or having my Taco Tuesday every Tuesday, it helps me, it helps fuel my passion, you know, you say what helps you being around dope people help me fuel and can continue to keep going. So I just feel like, shoot, being around dope people, it's kind of you know my marketing skill. But it, it not, now it now it goes a little bit further than that. Drop my sneakers, <laughs> your sneakers. You see it? I was gonna show Casey. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did this sneaker for this um for my friend. Sears and then she's an artist out here in LA. I moved to LA. So oh, you in LA? Now. I didn't know you moved to LA. Yeah. I did not know you were down in LA now. I thought you were still here in the Bay. Now I'm in LA. I've been in LA for about a month. Too. Oh, are you liking it? You enjoying it down? Are you enjoying it? So yeah, far? I mean, of course, I'm always back and forth because my best friends live out here, but it's different when you had to move. Yeah. You know, because, you know, my stuff, my spot was out that way. So. You know, moving to LA was just, you know, and still trying to be focused and create. It's just a lot, you know? So it's like, (laughs) so I'm still trying to, you know, unwind and unpack and get back to my creative state of mind. Cause I'm like, you know, that move to, it's draining. Yeah, it's draining. Yeah, trust me. You know, I moved from Atlanta. (laughs) I moved from Atlanta out here. So I know how it is when you pick up and move and you try to get into a new spot. You're trying to settle in, get your new routes and get your new. You know, routine. It just take a little while, mm-hmm. but you eventually about about four to six months. You kind of start settling in. <laughs> Not four to six months, Nitty. Don't say I'm, that. I'm, man, it take a little while, man. I'm telling you, it takes a while because you gotta get. Four to six months. 
Yeah, um, because you got to get that routine down. You got to get on box. You got to, you know, make I man, I had stuff I'm in the garage for, I had stuff, man. I had stuff in the garage for the longest. I was like, you know, sometimes you're like, man, I don't know where this at. And then you just buy it. You just buy another one because you don't feel like mm -hmm. looking for it. And then if you go through some random box one day, it's like, oh, that's what that thing was I was looking for. You know what I mean? So it just take a little while. But once you kind of get some, that, when, you, when about four to six months, when you start really getting settled in, you're going to start feeling like at home because, you know, for a first couple of months, you just like, you just like, you don't know where, you don't know where to go. You're trying to find new restaurants, you know, you're excited. But then sometimes that excitement kind of start wearing off a little bit and, you know, it starts settling in. But it's going to be, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. Congratulations for, you know, making that move. Because some people never, because some people never really make that, that leap. You know, some people talk about the journey and some people talk about moving, but they never make that leap and they kind of hold them back. Yeah, you know if I was in the Bay, I'd be at Trap Art. I, I know, I haven't see seen you. I just thought you were laying low. I thought you were laying low, getting, you know what I'm saying, getting some new gear together, yeah, getting some new things together, because you know, I, I haven't step, seen you. I step out for me and then Jesse, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I knew. I yeah, haven't I seen you. I knew I haven't seen you. I was like, she must be laying low trying to get her, get a new collection together, so she's going to pop out with a new collection. But I, but this, this actually is a... Uh, uh, even better thing that I think because you actually moved to something now, now, now you're down, you kick down with Meshi, you kind of, you guys can get together, get some content yeah, yeah. together, you guys. I got a, I, I have a whole, you know, idea of what you guys are going to be doing, and, and I can feel like <laughs> you guys are going to be creating so much content down that it's going to be insane. Yeah, now, yeah, Meshi, he's getting comfortable too. His, uh, little, his space is dope, like, especially his uh, studio space, that his little man cave that he created. Yeah, I was like, okay. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be dope, man. And I, and I look forward to seeing what you guys gonna create, especially talking about your commercial, with your music, you know, some more collections. Yeah. I'm gonna get down there. We had to get down there, come even shoot some with you guys. You know, what I mean, I, I love, I love, I love LA. You know, I love coming down. I love the vibes in LA, especially in the summertime. I love them summertime vibes in LA. So, man, you can definitely, yeah. you know, lock me in. I'll be down there at some point, <laughs> trying to get in, trying to, trying to lock in with you guys. So, enjoy. That what you're doing, man. I'm proud of you. I'm so happy for you. You know, you've been doing some amazing things. You know, you said you said uh, you, you blazed a trail here in the Bay Area. You put your foot down, and people know what the sneakerhead brand is. And I look forward to you, you know, creating some more dope stuff, man. So, I just want you to kind of like, you know, tell us something about you that, you know, that kind of got you on this mode to where you're saying, hey, man, I know that, you know, I'm gonna be the best designer. You know, in the, out here in the Bay and on the West Coast, and the things that you're gonna do that you got coming up, that's gonna, you know, take a take your brand to the next level. So tell us about some of that stuff that you got planned in your head. Just if you want to give us a sneak, you know, a sneak peek of it, that'll be great. <laughs> okay, Nitty, you better come with the questions. Hey, okay. Hey. <laughs> hey. Nah. Um. Well, I mean, uh, I used to side off doing collaborations. But since I've been in LA, I've been meeting some dope, dope people. I mean, of course, Bay Area, I met so many dope people and I appreciate my whole squad. I appreciate all the artists that came to Taco Tuesdays that showed up for, for a sneakerhead period, you know? So like, you already know when, when things get settled in the LA, we tell you, y'all coming. We yeah, all, we're gonna you know, be down we're there. still on the ride. Yeah, yeah like, we're we going you know, we Bay to LA, you know, that's together. nothing. You know, that's nothing. Right. So it's like building that strong relationship, you know, with a lot of the people that I work with. Um, we in L.A. now, you know what I'm saying? It's like not just me, we, you know. So, um, but other than that, I feel like I, I'm going to do some dope collaborations 2022. You know, I was very off off of it because I didn't want to kind of like uh, brand off of um, my own brand. You know, I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to work on your brand. I'm still trying to create my own so how you know like uh -uh, what we're not gonna do i'm not gonna sew the piece and just sew your logo on something that i created you know and that's a lot of people when they tap in with me on collaborations that's what they want like okay so can you create this vision and i'm gonna just go ahead and put my logo on top of your stuff and it's like no <laughs> once, you all the leg, once you do all the leg work and they just get the credit <laughs> Right. I'm like, okay, no, that's not the collaboration that I want in my head. You know, that's not what I see. But um, there's a lot of people out here that I'm uh, juiced and excited to do some dope collaborations with in a collab, meaning both of us doing some work, you know. So, yeah. yeah. 
So collaboration all twenty two, you know. So I agree. Yeah. I've been opening my I've been opening my mindset up to collaboration as well. I know some people will be asking me sometimes and I say, uh, not this not at the moment because like I said, <laughs> you know what I mean? It just it just a lot of sometimes it comes with a lot of a lot of headache then you know what you're gonna get from it and so now i think i'm kind of like take a step back and redo it and rethink about it and kind of like open myself up to more collaboration because sometimes you kind of isolate yourself and you kind of get in your own world you know you kind of get in your own little world and you do your own thing but you know it's good to kind of work with other people to kind of help you know push you forward they push you you push them and you guys create something dope so i i want to take that from you to kind of you know implement myself to kind of be like let me let me do some more collaborations and talk to people more because that's why i want to do the podcast i want to talk to people more like at first i was just like you know i want to just do it myself but then i want to kind of i want to get <laughs> right. you know what i mean i want to get people's story out there as well because i i come across a lot of dope people and i you know they have a lot of they have a lot of great stories and i want them to be able to share those stories so other people can hear them as well and that's one of the reasons i want to you know, i created the podcast to give me another outlet like i say as artists you know doing the photography mm-hmm. doing graphics doing you know mixed media doing podcasts like you're saying you're doing music you're doing the kickbacks you're doing your fashion you know you got your sneakers thing so it's just a lot of as an artist you're always finding new ways to you know, branch out and be heard and be seen. And I think that's one of the things I enjoy about being around you because you inspire me from all the creation that you, and you just keep doing different things. Every time I see you pop out with something new, I'm like, okay, she on this now. This is sick. She's doing doing this now. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's no cap to being creative. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you don't have to stay in the lane. You can kind of switch over as long as it's who you are. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you're not switching sides or becoming somebody that you're not, but being a creative, you can switch lanes. You can, you know, dip and dive and things and see what works. See what actually is, you know, what you enjoy doing. Because it's like you do one thing, you don't know if this may be another niche of yours, you know? Absolutely. Or it may fit, fit, uh, feel another sensation in your heart. I don't know. You know, it <laughs> may feel good. You know, you wake up in the morning and just start doing stuff because it makes you feel really good. Absolutely. You know, so it's like, you know, that's 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 my motive. Like, I want to do things that make me feel good about myself. You know, absolutely. <laughs> so, where do you see the, where do you see the brand in the next? five to ten years like what do you see the sneakerhead brand do you want to be in is it something like you want to be in stores do you want to be in boutiques like what do you see your brand going in the next five or ten years uh honestly um i see my stuff being in more ballrooms i would just say not ballroom showrooms um i just of course just realized that my all my stuff is all custom and especially i'm out in l.a or New York, Bay Area, you know, a lot of people and artists pick clothes from showrooms. They don't go to the mall. They hire a stylist to go pick their clothes out at showrooms. Wow. So that's my motive. Like, I'm going to create pieces and put them in showrooms. So I technically won't see the artist, but the stylist is going to put it on the artist. And if they like it, they buy it. If not, they rent it out and then you still getting profit off of it. Why not? You know? So, of course, and then I want a storefront, you know, okay. maybe on Melrose, somewhere, oh, really? maybe on an maybe on an island somewhere. Hey. I don't know. I but hear you, man. A, speak a, that into existence, man. Room. Speak that. Speak it louder. Say it again. Let me hear you say it one more time. You got to speak it louder. You got to say it one more time because we got to speak this into existence. Say it one more time oh. for me. I'm going to have a storefront on the island in Melrose. I'm going to have my stuff in a showroom in L.A., Vegas, Bay Area, you know, across yep. the whole world. You know, hey, that's what I want to hear, man. Sneakerhead. You're yeah, going to see it man. on BET. Yeah, you man, know? you gotta have it big, big and bold, man, big and bold. You know, have that storefront, man. We're gonna. I want to be able to say, man, you know, she was on my podcast and she said she was gonna do this. I, I want to be that proud person. To, you know what I'm saying? And be like, man, I remember I used to shoot her. You know, we always had a storm. Like, man, I remember I used to shoot her fashion show when she was in the Bay, and she said when she came on my podcast, she was gonna have a store on Melrose. Now look at her, man. She running Melrose. You know, she got two locations on Melrose. <laughs> she in Vegas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? She got her clothes on. You know, all her designs on all the famous people. People, you know what I mean? Tyler so like, yeah. Perry and, yeah. and, and all them, you know, all them yeah. shows. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a, I'm trying. Honestly, I had. I know you got two girls, right? Yep. 
So you watch Nickelodeon all day, huh? Yeah, we own it. You already know. Oh, you know who uh, Lele is? Yep, she got the show on Netflix. Okay, you, that girl Lele. Yeah, My girls love it. That girl Lele. And you know, if you've seen it, you know she always got fly jackets on. You see it, Nick? Yeah, yeah. No, you you just turn it on. Hey, I look, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Some of the stuff they they watch so much because it's not like when we were kids where you know what I mean you only had a certain amount of channels that you can watch. And it was on a certain, it was programmed like a Saturday morning. You had to get up and you had to watch cartoons and that type of stuff. But now it's like all over the place. You got Amazon, you got Disney, you got Netflix. And so these kids not just all watching the same things like we watched when we were kids. You know, we all kind of watched the same stuff when we were kids, but now they're watching so many different things. So when I pop in, I just got to go sit there a little bit just to make sure it ain't no craziness <laughs> that they're watching. And then I kind of right. like... Let them watch and not walk out. You know what I mean? That's, gonna, yeah. that's the only time I can get them to sit down and be quiet other than that and <laughs> running around crazy. But, yeah, I've definitely seen, you know, that girl, Lele. She's, like, really popular. I know seen on social media. And then, you know, for her to have a show on Netflix, that's really that's really dope for her. And somewhere, like I said, I, I have seen her clothes and her jackets and different things that she wearing. But I didn't realize they were probably, like, custom or anything like that. I didn't really think oh, that. Oh, yeah, definitely custom. If you've seen... Yeah, I think I put it on Netflix. I was like, what is this? I said, dang, she got a show. I'm like, that's crazy because I used to see her on uh, Instagram. She used to be rapping in the car with her dad. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, that's crazy. Now she got a show on Netflix and she looking fly. She looks fly on Instagram, but she looks even fly on Nickelodeon. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And somebody like, has like, a style. Like, and she had to wear somebody garments and why not yours? You know what I mean? Like, right, why not yours? Right. You've been in some of these different movies. You've been in these these videos, you know what I mean? Like, there's so much possibility, especially being there in, you know, L.A. because you can tap in in so many different markets. And it's always, somebody's always looking for a fly designer, you know, for new artists or, you know, up-and-coming artists. So, man, just keep your ear to the ground. And you stay out in them streets and you keep designing, keep your head down, and it's definitely going to pop for you, man. And I'm, and I'm hoping, you know, one day when you get to the top of that mountain, you look back and be like, look, man, I remember this guy used to shoot me. This is who I want to shoot my campaign for this. You know what I mean? I'm going to go hit him up. I want him to shoot my campaign. That's when you had, and that's how we pull one another up. You know what I mean? Or, you know, yeah. I get into a position where I can say, hey, look, man, I know a, a dope designer, man. I don't want, I want her to kind of do all the pieces and then I'm going to shoot it. And that's how we help one another and that's how we pull one another up, you know? I mean, so that's yeah. how I. You're gonna feel. be right next to me. That's how what I feel, mean? man. That's we're what I'm saying. Be, that's how I feel. We're gonna be like this. Yeah, the same that's thing. what I'm, I'm saying. Gonna be- I'm gonna be like Nitty. You see me, Nitty? Hey, I mean, yeah, know? I'm like now. They're gonna be like, we gotta step out fresh, man. I need, a, I need some fresh. You gotta go and make me some custom stuff. You know what I mean? So that's how, that's know. how, that's how I envision the futures for all the people that you know I come up with in this, in this industry, and we be kind of like been, been friends, becoming family, and so that's why I want to see us and we grow because I see. You know, uh, Jonathan, I see a meshy, I see you. You know, we all coming up together and everybody's doing their own thing. And once we all get to the top, we can all share resources and do different things like that. And that's going to be amazing for to see everybody, you know, start off where we started from, you know, over in, uh, and hey, we're in there in that building in that room. Everybody mm-hmm. shooting in different rooms, Maven. just being uh-huh. involved in Maven, just being creative. You know, we're gonna have all those stories. You know what I mean? So when we get when we get to the top of that mountain, we're gonna be like, look, man, we came a long way, and it's time to kind of go even further. We're gonna be out of we're gonna be over the moon. We're gonna be out of here, man. So I'm so proud. We already of you. we already hopping over though, cause we still consistent, and that's just I feel like that's so dope. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, you're still doing your stuff. You, you you're making dope vision into now. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. You know what I'm saying? It's That's a what brand. I want. It's yeah, a, it's a yeah, brand. It's and you. It's, it's just slow. And it's just, it's a slow. It's a slow burn. You know, you, sometimes some people get it and they go fast, and some part and some people take it and you just gotta go slow, one step at a time. And you just kind of continually, kind of like I said, it's all about branding. Like I wasn't into the clothes. I, I couldn't make none of the clothes, so I was like, I had to find something else. So I was like, I'm gonna put my logo on every photo so if they're sharing it throughout <laughs> right. the bay area somebody gonna see it at some point and they right. continue, consistently see it they're gonna they're gonna know it like you said you put the name sneakerhead all over everything and then at some point you can you can dial it down and you don't have to put mm-hmm. it on there so then i can start doing more behind the scenes stuff i can start mm-hmm. doing this type of stuff i don't have to put my logo on them i can just kind of do a little bit more the behind the scenes so i'm learning from you i'm listening i'm listening are we listening look i'm still learning yeah, I'm you learning. know I'm, listening. I'm still learning it's still a journey you know like i'm still on it so for somebody be like so how did your journey it's like i'm still on the journey i'm still <laughs> on the path of just not giving up, staying consistent, staying strong, you know, because 
it's not easy. Well, you know that being an entrepreneur is not easy. Not it's easy. not for everybody, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's not, but. man. So if somebody <laughs> wanted to get into this game, you know, before we wrap it up, if somebody wanted to get in this game, what's something you'll tell them, like, which one thing you, which one mistake that you made that you wouldn't want them to make so you'll try to give them the, the game as soon, right before they jump in, like, hey, look, look out for this. What's something you'll tell them? Oh. <laughs> like, off of Friday? You win some, you lose some, but you fight. <laughs> you got to roll with it. You win some, yeah, you lose you some, gotta you got to roll with some. it. Yeah, but you're able to wake up and fight another day, okay? But yeah. um, Got to be able to bounce gotta, back. Yeah, you have to enjoy doing what you love to do. Like, never lose sight of that. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So I, I feel like just, just make sure that this is what you love to do and keep doing it because there are going to be days that <laughs> – you're not gonna love doing what you love to do, but you gotta just keep doing it. You can't give up. That's what I would tell them. Like it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, that's, that's keep going. That's keep super, going. That's super dope, man. I appreciate you. You know, taking time out your your day to kind of hop on here and talk to me. I appreciate it. Man. I know it was a little yeah. my fault the last time we tried to link up, man. I, nah, I didn't sure. realize I had to get up. You know, I was out super late, you know, shooting the fashion show. Get up super I already knew. I was like, morning. trap art. I was like, Nitty, you was not good. <laughs> I didn't realize. I had, I honestly <laughs> forgot. I honestly forgot that there was a trap art that night. You know, normally it's on a Saturday, but it was on a Friday. And I forgot about it because we had already scheduled it. And so it, it didn't dawn on me until like the next, to that night when I got home. I was like, oh, man, I got to get up in the morning and record. And I was like, ah, oh, it was hard. Because like, I get back, it's like, Two thirty, three o'clock. Cause I had to uh-huh. drive. It's like two thirty, three o'clock, and then I don't really go to sleep until like three thirty, four. You know what I mean? Cause I had to relax. Yeah. And then I think I was trying to get up, and I was like, "Ah, oh, man, she's gonna be mad at me, man. She's gonna be so mad at me." Yeah, so well, I appreciate I you, though. you know, you know, rescheduling with me and taking the time out for me. You know, I really appreciate you. I, 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 I look up to you for inspiration. You know, I look to you for guidance for this industry and how you guys are moving with these clothing. So one day I'm gonna be able to be put some put some clothes, some branded clothing out. I don't have the I don't have the the worth all to kind of do that type of stuff yet. So that's why I try to learn from you guys. One of these days I'm gonna do a fashion show. I'm not gonna just shoot the fashion. I'm gonna actually do the fashion show one day. I'm putting it out there. I don't know when, okay. but one day I might do it. I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna do it one day. But you know, I I, 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 appreciate I already you guys. I already see it. I see it. Don't <laughs> vision. Don't yeah, vision. Everything you. on that runway is gonna be dope. Okay. Yeah, man. I appreciate you. So, man, before we get out of here, give them away. You know, give out your socials and how they can contact you and what to look forward to. You know, for the coming future for you. Oh yeah. So you can contact me on my Instagram, sneakerhead. It's spelled S N I Q. Okay, Nitty, not S N I C. Okay. <laughs> Get it right. Get it right. Neek. S N I Q K E R H E A D. I have a TikTok. It's official sneakerhead. I'm still, uh, you know, working on staying consistent with that. But I do have some dope sneakers that you feel me. Yep. From white to some, you know, to some some dope one on ones. Yep. That's dope, but, man. Um, Man, you definitely you definitely doing your thing. I want you guys to tap in with her if you're looking for some custom gear. Man, you need some custom shoes, clothes, pants, jackets, shirts, whatever. <laughs> Head to toe. She got the hats for you. She got the beans. Whatever you need, you know, any kind of garment, she got it. If she can't, I'm pretty sure she can kind of get the material and she can make it. You know, but make sure you make sure you come with the bag because it ain't gonna be cheap. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't no cheap. It ain't no cheap stuff around here. So when you rock, when you come get that sneaker here, you bring your bag because, you know what I'm saying, we got to support one another. And, you know, you're going to go spend all this money on these different, you know, these high-end brands that don't know who you are. You know, instead, spend it with somebody that you know, that you know is going to help feed their family, help feed their creativity, can help push them to the next level because you, don't, you never know. We need that confidence, too. So with that, man, I'm going to go ahead and wrap okay. the podcast up. This is your boy, Frank Nitty from the city. I'm out. <laughs>